Hello. Today's uh, webinar is being provided by uh, two of Carbon Trust Certification's OSIS Associate Directors, uh, myself and my colleague Morgan Jones. My name is Michael Gifford and we will start today's presentation just by running through the agenda that we plan to cover. First of all, there will be some introductory remarks uh, and then we move into uh, research that led to the development for a water standard for the Carbon Trust. We'll talk a little bit about Carbon Trust certification and the work that we do. Before then, I hand over to Morgan Jones, who is at the Carbon Trust certification, uh, certification Manager, uh, who will talk through uh, the Carbon Trust water standard methodology uh, before we then wrap up. The Carbon Trust itself uh, was set up by the UK government some 12 years ago. Now it's an independent, not-for-profit company. The Carbon Trust standard itself was launched almost exactly five years ago on the 24th of June 2008. It put in place a scheme for handling carbon emissions. The mission of the Carbon Trust is to accelerate the move to a, low, uh, to a sustainable low carbon economy. The role of the Carbon Trust is to advise businesses, governments around the world and the public sector on the opportunities they face in a sustainable low carbon world. We also measure and certify the environmental footprints of organizations and products and services. We also help develop and deploy low carbon technologies and solutions from energy efficiency to renewable power. Why should we go about certifying water reduction? Interestingly, the latest mandatory carbon reporting guidance that the government has issued to support the regulations uh, indicate that as part of the uh, carbon uh, guidance uh, on, uh, on environmental impacts, these now extend to water as well. Um, this would indicate to us that the government guidance is taking a particular direction on where they think uh, progress should be into the, into the future. And to us, this in appears very consistent with the way we have developed and implemented the water standard. Water is inherently part of the low carbon uh, economy there is an increasing risk of water scarcity as the climate warms. The map below indicates only for Great Britain uh, the areas of water scarcity, but similar maps now exist for uh, the entire globe showing countries, territories that face water scarcity. Water itself is heated, it's cooled, it's condensed and it's moved around by pumping, all using energy and contributing further to greenhouse gas emissions. So the savings of getting water under control are both in the cost of carbon and in water, them, uh, and in water itself the savings are huge. Estimates are that by 2030 global fresh water demand will be about 40% below the current level of supply and thus the problem is becoming urgent. UN Water have said success of green economy depends on sustainable, integrated and resource efficient management of water resources. We commissioned some research in October of 2013 from research agency Vanson Bourne. We asked them to take a look at five countries, Korea, China, the United States, Brazil and the United Kingdom. 
they undertook a telephone survey of almost 500 corporate level executives in listed companies and the research covered a number of different functions so not just sustainability and environmental directors but also finance possibly marketing chief executives and across a number of industries the question put to them is which of the following should management be focusing on very clearly these organizations have got it in the sense that they already focus on their carbon emissions many of them are now looking at their usage of grid energy and oil and gas increasingly water is coming into their focus and following that waste other natural resources rare earth metals and other minerals what is clear to us though is that there remains a disconnect and that is given that there is likely to be reduced water availability going forwards few organizations have actually sat down and looked at what the implications of reduced water availability might be our research shows that about 60% of organizations could be affected and could have their products and services affected um, through a, a lack of water. The non-availability of this valuable resource is likely to require them to reconsider their supply chains and the territories uh, in which they're operating. And water itself and its uh, non-availability is likely to uh, decrease the quality of those products and services. Our report goes on then to show that about 4 in 10 of organizations are not monitoring the, the risks to their business of um, environment related shocks such as energy price rises and environmental disasters that might include floods, high winds and earthquakes. Half of the organizations in our survey have not set targets for managing the reduction of carbon, water or waste and only about 13% of board directors currently receive any form of incentive compensation based on their performance on sustainability metrics. With this background we've determined that many businesses and public sector organizations have made significant progress on their carbon reduction and that the more leading organizations are now starting to look at water uh, as a key business issue. I would suggest for example the MOD's recent uh, announcements uh, that water increasingly will form a part of procurement decisions. The results from five pilot companies who we have walked with, worked with over uh, recent months are impressive. The five companies who uh, participated in our Carbon Trust Water Standard Pilot included Coca-Cola Enterprises, Sainsbury, Sunlight, Branston, Glambia Ingredients Ireland and since then a number of other organizations are going through certification to the water standard. We and more importantly they see clear benefits from an integrated approach looking at initially carbon and water but other uh, environmental impacts on their business as well. While water itself is very complex we are clear that measurement is the first step towards management and reduction. Organizations need to calculate and measure how much water they are abstracting and how much is being returned uh, as effluent. My colleague Morgan Jones will talk through our methodology and some of the technical aspects in more detail in a moment. Let me now turn to Carbon Trust certification. Uh, this is uh, a freestanding business independently uh, within the Carbon Trust. 
The role of Carbon Trust Certification is, first of all, to certify organizational carbon footprints to the Carbon Trust Standard, and we've now been doing that for almost exactly five years. We are now turning increasingly to the Organizational Water Reduction Certification, which for those who meet our criteria will result in their getting the Carbon Trust Water Standard. Over and above these two, we undertake organizational footprint verification of both carbon and water, and for organizations that meet various criteria, we are able to provide a verification statement. Finally, we provide product and service footprint uh, certification, and to date we have done some 28,000 stockkeeping units as individual items, ranging from building products, consumer electronics, and food and drink products, uh, right the way across the globe, many different territories, and this is part of a life cycle analysis from either cradle to gate or cradle to grave. We produced the world's first organizational carbon footprint reduction certification, the Carbon Trust Standard for Carbon. It measures an organization's carbon footprint. To date, over 9.5 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent uh, have uh, been measured and reduced. The underlying organizations that we have certified have saved over 450 million pounds uh, through their reduced energy usage, and we have now issued just over a thousand certificates. We launched the world's first product carbon footprint certification service several years ago. We undertake certification to international standards that some of you may be familiar with, such as PAS 2050, the Greenhouse Gas Protocol, and this service is accredited by the UK Accreditation Service, UCAS. You can see we've done more than 28,000 products around the world, and these products have contributed to footprints that we have certified of over 8 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. Our new water certification becomes the world's first organizational water use reduction certification. It's just been launched and it is now available. It enables organizations to measure and manage water usage. We can help identify reduction opportunities and ultimately award the Carbon Trust Water Standard to those who meet our stringent criteria. Organizations benefit by an enhanced reputation. They are seen as those taking control of an increasingly scarce resource, water, and managing their business going forwards and its usage. Uh, the other benefit is a, we are able to provide a benchmark of water use. Organizations collect data on the water they abstract, and we help them setting targets for reduction and look for ways to reduce water use in future as part of driving a behavior. Those who attain the standard gain the recognition through the usage of the logo. We have uh, a quotation from Tony Grayling, who's the head of climate change and communities at the Environment Agency, who said, the Environment Agency welcomes the Carbon Trust Water Standard because it will help to increase awareness of the need to save water and promote good practice. I'd now like to hand over to my colleague, uh, Morgan Jones, who is the certification manager. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I'm just going to uh, talk you through the specific methodology of our water standard. Um, uh, in response to the growing interest in water from our existing carbon standard bearers and other customers, 
Um, and our view that water was rising up the corporate social responsibility agenda, we set about last year developing a standard to provide third-party recognition of leading companies' approach to water efficiency and reduction. So in order to develop a, a robust standard, we embarked on an extensive development process, including research, stakeholder engagement, and a pathfinder process. Um, the approach drew largely on our experience with the carbon standard and we took advice from significant stakeholders including the water boards, um, environmental organisations and our um, pool of existing carbon standard bearers. Um, we have an external advisory board um, who have re include representatives from business, NGOs and academia. Um, they approved the methodology uh, and we la launched it earlier this year. The standard follows a similar conceptual approach to our carbon standard in recognizing a framework for managing environmental issues that follows um, the measure, manage and reduce um, points. The framework recognizes that within an organization what is measured gets managed and ultimately performance will follow on from that. So when we apply that to water, we, we look for an organization to report accurate um, data on water use, both in terms of the water into the organization and uh, effluent out of the organization. We also look for year-on-year -year reductions, either in an ab on absolute terms or against a benchmark of water intensity. Uh, finally, we look at an organization's approach to water management, um, both within its organization, um, but also externally in the way it behaves in areas of water scarcity and how it interacts with its supply chain and its customers. In terms of the specific boundary and data that we ask the company to report, the boundary is the direct use of water by a company. Um, it doesn't include supply chain um, water use, um, although we assess that through our um, water management assessment. Um, so the, the supply chain impact is included in, in the qualitative assessment. But the boundary of water data is split um, between inputs, which you can see on the left of the slide, and outputs uh, on the right. In terms of inputs, we encourage companies to report their main supply, which uh, data can be read from meter readings. Um, any abstracted water from surface water sources, which are uh, rivers and lakes. Um, any abstraction from groundwater, which would be from a borehole. And any rainwater collection through um, estimated uh, collection of um, usage or gauge readings that some rainwater collection units um, include. In terms of output, outputs, we encourage companies to re return water to the environment in a clean state. So therefore we're interested in the quantity of trade effluent, um, which is an effluent that is specifically licensed. Um, and there are other optional outputs that can be reported as part of the assessment which are the um, other uh, white uh, boxes you can see on the right-hand side. We, as I said earlier, we, we expect companies to show reductions um, and uh, all organizations that are certified must have demonstrated a reduction in water use over time. Um, in that way, the key principles are the same as the carbon standard. Um, there's two ways a company can demonstrate reduction. That could be on an absolute basis or against a um, intensity um, basis. The reason we have an intensity reduction is we don't want to exclude growing organizations from um, applying to the standard. Um, growing organizations may not be able to show an absolute reduction, but they could be becoming a more efficient as they grow, which is a good thing. And therefore, we've um, set our benchmark at, of reduction on an intensity basis of 1.75% a year. Uh, that is set at that level to offset economic growth and to keep water um, consumption or water use stable at today's levels. In terms of our qualitative criteria, 
this is the area where we assess a company's approach to water as a corporate social responsibility issue. Um, we view the following areas as key for demonstrating best practice, um, which should drive uh, good performance in terms of um, water reductions. They can be roughly split the approaches we expect into three areas of governance, measurement and management. The governance is important as it's key that the company has a clear policy and that people with responsibility are in place for implementing that policy. The policy also needs to be communicated properly to all um, relevant stakeholders. We also think that it's very important to have good data collection on water use and to also consider the abundance of water in areas of scarcity. Um, and therefore, that's the area where we assess a company's approach to water measurement. Finally, we assess how a company achieves reductions and in efficiencies, including how it monitors its day-to-day -day performance, the targets that it sets, and how it drives the culture of um, water efficiency through the business, through um, programs with its staff. We also look at capital and expenditure on technology and how it trains its staff. For many organizations, the majority of water use is actually in its supply chain. Um, so, off, so we include an assessment of how a company interacts with its suppliers to encourage good behavior. Um, and we also, if applicable, um, assess how it interacts with its customers and how its products are designed and, and used. So um, we've recently published our standard, um, the Carbon Trust Water Standard, and behind that there are two documents, which you can see there. We're very happy to have launched the standard earlier this year, and we're looking to recognize more leading companies' achievements. Um, and at this point, I'll hand back to Michael um, for his concluding remarks. Thank you very much, Morgan. It's been a brief webinar, but I hope that we have summarized uh, during uh, this brief presentation why it is that, first of all, we believe uh, water uh, requires attention as part of any effective uh, sustainability plan. We have also tried to indicate uh, that water as an item is heated, cooled, condensed, and moved, all of which uh, uses greenhouse gases and increases those emissions. Therefore, by becoming more efficient in water usage, you will save not only huge amounts in water, but also uh, contribute to carbon reductions too. The Carbon Trust can help organizations, firstly, to quantify water usage, we can also help to benchmark your water use and develop water efficiency plans for you. We can help you to set and deliver effective reduction targets and we can also help achieve the Carbon Trust water standard for those who are ready to. This will help you to become one of the leaders in water stewardship and enhance your reputation uh, as one of those leaders and will enable you to reduce your exposure to water scarcity uh, both in this country and in other territories around the world and will immediately lessen your impact on the local environment. I recognize that there's a lot of ground to cover in a webinar such as this one. If you would like some further discussion or to talk to one of our representatives, please telephone us or email us or take a look at our website. We hope you found this interesting and thank you very much indeed for your uh, attention. Bye-bye.